everybody. So this is a quick video um, to show you this particular batik tulis here from the island of Java in what was then the Dutch East Indies, now the Republic of Indonesia. This particular batik tulis is a form in the form of a hip wrapper. And this particular batik tulis is to be distinguished from its more traditional Javanese form, which is this one here usually only exists in brown, black, dark blue indigo, and the natural color of the cotton that is um, white or a, a variation thereof. So this is actually a headscarf. This isn't the most um, this isn't the most delicate of craftsmanship, but it is vintage. And the interesting thing about vintage batik is that the dye that they've used, apparently because of pollution and the changes in the mineral level and various chemical level of the water, it completely changed the way dye or natural dye worked or works on a batik and the colorings that um, people used to be able to obtain, especially these brown and indigo ones, are very hard to obtain now. So that's just a contrast on, um, if you see there, I mean the brown of batik tulis blend really well with wood because they are uh, plant-based dyes, uh, at least the vintage ones. So that's for reference. I will talk about the traditional batik um, traditional Javanese batik in a, in a different video um, in um, a larger discussion about contrasting and comparing to provide context for where the uniqueness of the Pranakan batik came into play against the tradition of the Javanese batik. So just in short for now, just as we talk about this particular piece, Pranakan batik is essentially an artifact of the Pranakan culture. Pranakan in um, in Indonesian or Malay, which actually Bahasa Malaysia and Indonesian came from the same uh, root or the same language, Bahasa Melayu, and it means a hybrid or um, a descendant of or a product of an intermarrying of two cultures, of two parents, of two seeds, of two entities. So I'll talk again about that when I discuss the larger context, uh, socio-historical and cultural context of the Pranakan culture as well as the Pranakan Batik from Java Island. But the most famous uh, city in Java Island for the production of um, amazing, amazing Pranakan Batik is a city called Pakalongan. I will put the spelling up here somewhere. This one here, however, take a bit of a Indo-Dutch slant. Now, typically that has a hint of more sort of European or Dutch flavoring in the aesthetic on top of the um, sort of cheerful, bright colored Chinese influence uh, because Pranakan Chinese in Java are a culture that is a mixture between Chinese, Javanese and a variety of other things, including Persian, Portuguese, and Dutch. Again, we'll talk about that in a separate video. So this hip wrapper, this is a hip wrapper, usually these batik come in the form of hip wrapper, uh, will drop from a woman's hip all the way down to around the ankle, and the length of that is usually about a meter. So that would be the bottom here. And as you can see, there's like a panel of design here where the uh, background is a little bit more plain with one unifying theme at the front here, in this case is a bouquet, which is very common. All the way up, um, I am not currently set up in an ideal way to show you such a large item. I will have to set up um, my place so that I can show you how a hip wrapper hang around the hip using a mannequin, but for that I need um, to prepare a space. And at the moment, I am still in the process of preparing for this channel but in the meantime, I've sold this piece, so if I don't do this now, this will go to the post tomorrow and you'll never see this again. And so I am very grateful to the person who purchased this um, um, to allow me to film this, um, even though this is no longer mine, and to allow me to hold on to this for about a week or so because I needed to find the time to be able to shoot this video. So we go all the way up and you can see that's a top. And this, the palu here, 
or um, I don't know why I want to say the head, but it's like the head of the, the panel of the hip wrapper usually sit at the front, dropped from the waist down. And if you go further, I'm going to turn at the back. So when the hip wrapper is wrapped around the hip, the body mainly consists of a more geometrical pattern like this one here. Um, in this case, this is the pattern and as you can see, in contrast with the panel design, that looks a bit more like a painting with, um, there it is, with one, um, with one design, unified design in the middle like that. I'll try and go up a little bit, like so, compared to something like so. So that's the body. And if you notice here, these are all hand drawn with using what we call chanting. It has liquid wax in it that can continue to boil next to the artist. You dip it, I will talk about that in a separate video, and you follow a pattern and you cover, this is wax resist technique, you cover each of these parts and then you dip the cloth and then you strip the wax and then you apply another layer of wax in the form of drawing and then you dip that and you keep doing that for every color here so now here we have yellow green excuse me blue pink there is like a turquoisey color here almost like a mixture between blue and green and yellow there so there's a super imposition which is interesting so there's a double layer of dyeing over here and then there's purple here which seems to be obtained from um, let me just hold on a second excuse me over here there's a bit more purple there and so this is the, the kind of, the, the flowers here is known as more of an Indo-Dutch style. And I will try to compare this with, um, I'll have to refer to this particular video in my next video because obviously I would not have this piece anymore to compare for you next against each other, unfortunately. Um, I still have my inventory or my personal collection is tucked away somewhere and it's either I do this now or I wait until I can unearth everything and by by then I really do not want to ask the kind purchaser, the new owner of this cloth, this hip wrapper, to wait any longer. So as you can see here, I will show you um, other finer um, batik where the dots are so tiny and they are so close together. Um, it requires a lot of skill, a great deal of skill. And because this is also um, natural dye, there is a specific way to care for these guys. You can't use detergent, you have to hand wash them. And if you use detergent, there is a way you have to be extremely gentle because otherwise the coloring will disappear. And you keep them in a um, bag with um, white peppercorns and some herbs, which I will talk about in a separate video. So for now, this is a Pranakan Chinese batik with a syrupy rose with this Indo-Dutch style of flowers here from the island of Java, approximately the early part of the 1900s. And one lucky gentleman in Australia is the owner of this particular piece now. I'll talk to you later. Bye.